Hello everyone. Um, hope you're all keeping well. I'm Anita Narayan and I run Ekans Trust in Pune. We work passionately to ensure that people with disabilities are empowered and included in society. We believe that conversations around disability are important. Demystifying Disabilities is a video series in which we will bring conversations with medical experts to you. We thank MQ Pharmaceuticals for sponsoring this series. Prevention of disability begins even before a baby is conceived. Once a woman gets pregnant, there are several things she can do to ensure her own health and that of the baby she is carrying. Delivering the baby is another important and very delicate activity. We must take care at each step. Today we have with us Dr. Girija Vag. She is a very well-known gynecologist with a wide range of experience. Welcome, Dr. Varg, and thank you for um, accepting our invitation to speak with us today. Namaskar, good afternoon, and thank you, Ms. Anita, for having me here on this session today. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Um, let us begin from the very beginning. Um, the first question is, what must be kept in mind while planning a pregnancy? For example, marriage between relatives, family planning, genetics, etc. What are your suggestions? Yeah, first and foremost, let's look at the wonderful larger picture. You know, making babies is a very serious business because we have to ensure that we are making a future healthy society. It's a huge responsibility taken by the woman along with family. And therefore, there has to be a lot of mindfulness contributed to this wonderful act of creating babies. First and foremost, we have to remember that we have to ensure that the mother as well as the baby is happy. So if if you're planning to have a baby, baby before pregnancy, one of the, uh, there has to be proper planning going into place. Now, one of the important things is the question that you asked is about marriages between relatives. Now, it has been found that if you marry between immediate relatives, there are possible of there being increased chances of congenital abnormalities in the baby. Because human race is an evolving race and the genes required to have a newer evolution you cannot have a same sort of sharing between the families and therefore this would matter secondly if there is any such kind of a streak in the family let's say there has been a history of schizophrenia or there has been a history of certain disability uh, like uh, which can be carried through the generations then that also has to be taken into account not to avoid that relationship but to be on guard so that it can be properly organized in a way where we can analyze it ahead of time and the third thing is about getting married we have to remember that currently because of the social change a lot of uh, couples are planning their babies a little late they are marrying late there's no harm in doing that but we have to remember that the biological clock is ticking and that also converts into aging of the gametes and when the gametes age when the couples are older there are possibilities that there can be increased possibility of babies born with disabilities and these can be prevented by proper health optimization like if you are obese if you have any disorders like blood pressure complications diabetes or any hypothyroidism or you are taking any medications for any reason maybe your skin ailments or your mental ailments or you are having a bad lifestyle wherein you are not able to sleep you are smoking or you are doing any substance abuse it's always better to optimize it before at least 6 months before planning a pregnancy it is necessary that we get into this kind of a proper planning because it's really really disheartening to see sometimes you know patients presenting to us with a pregnancy which has been there and then they said no doc we didn't take any precautions but now we are in a quandary whether we want to continue or don't want to continue and then you know we had had a little uh, sort of a naughty lifestyle we were taking a lot of uh, drinks and smoking and things like that now this is not nice you know because there are always chances that there can be problems now the doctors have very very limited uh, kind of there are a lot of avenues available but remember that there are very limited things in which we can put you through screening so why not have a better approach to these things look at it positively so if you are planning babies take on the responsibility of optimizing your health ensuring that you do not have any challenges visit a doctor you can always undergo some tests some understanding get into a good lifestyle and then go ahead with your babies because this can contribute 
to nearly about avoiding 60 to 70 percent of disabilities and that's a big number you know the serious ones definitely can be avoided by taking these simple measures that's wonderful to know and i really hope that parents of uh, new couples families of new couples friends peers are able to advise them to at least go to a doctor and get the kind of advice that they need that is most important because uh, you do find that women go to gynecologists very often it is very rare that a man goes to get advice before even you know starting to plan a family it will be good to have both partners um, getting the right counseling before they plan right. a family yeah um, so going to the next step which is deep pregnancy itself what are your recommendations for a woman during pregnancy in terms of diet health safety etc and how does this impact the health of the baby yeah so i will take this question uh, ms anika definitely first and then after this i would like to speak about the man composition uh, component that no. you mentioned just now so yes during pregnancy the moment you miss your periods it's always a good practice to confirm that you are pregnant or not now pregnancy confirmation doesn't come by doing just a urine pregnancy test you know you have to ensure that the baby is inside your womb and that is done by a sonography so sonography usually performed between 6 to 8 weeks of pregnancy the duration from which you have missed your periods usually confirms and dates your pregnancy tells you that it is a singleton pregnancy that is a single baby growing inside your womb and everything around it can be analyzed now many times there are a lot of reservations about ultrasound because people feel that sonography is like an x ray it will cause irradiation it will cause harm to the baby not so there is more than 50 to 70 years now down the line which have shown that sonography does not cause any harm whatsoever to the fetus so we have to be absolutely confident doing this wonderful test the second important thing is you have to ensure that your blood tests have been done and these can be done especially to rule out anemia because nearly about 50 to 70% of indian women are anemic they have iron deficiency which can cause reduced oxygen carrying capacity which can cause harm to the fetus as well as your own health you have to know whether you are suffering from any thyroid disorder especially hypothyroidism because if that is so you require to correct it during the pregnancy otherwise your baby can suffer you know mental abilities are associated with hypothyroidism preterm deliveries are associated and we know that if the babies are born prematurely then there is again a high possibility that these babies will suffer some sort of a disability as times go by secondly we have to find out whether you are diabetic because the current uh, statistics national statistics is showing that india has a possibility of 30% diabetics during pregnancy now that's very high obesity contributes to all the problems during pregnancy so these things have to be tested at the outset you know certain antenatal profile is what the lab is labeled as and then the doctor will advise you to undergo this screening over a period of time there are certain very important timelines like one is the, as i said the confirmation scan then currently you know the care of uh, miss anita from the time that you and i became mothers to today things have changed the care of the antenatal care has become a reverse triangle so by the time the patient is 20 weeks pregnant that is the first half of pregnancy 40 weeks is the entire duration of the pregnancy most of the things are already been established correctly so you establish whether she has any disorder what is her weight you give her guidance about diet you find out what is whether it's a twin pregnancy single twin pregnancy and today a very important window has been identified and that is the window between at around approximately 12 to 13 weeks of pregnancy wherein you undergo a special test by a sonography which is called as an nt scan so a nuchal translucency is measured on the sonography that's the neck thickness of the baby and then it is collaborated with certain bio tests in the mother's body so mother's blood is taken for testing and that gives us a screening for the possibility whether the baby is going to suffer from any down syndrome like disability or there are so many other trisomies or there are abnormalities in the uh, woman baby like you know the uh, where the baby doesn't grow well it's an exo chromosome it will not have um, sexual characters and things like that so all these can be and when you are doing this treating which is called as combined testing a first trimester scan or a double marker test which is done critically between 11 plus 6 weeks 13 weeks of gestation and which also is a opportunity where you can do a detailed analysis of the baby's growth 
conditions like anencephaly where the baby's brain is not growing or if there is any organic dysfunction like neural tube defects this can be diagnosed by at this point in time and at that, that particular scan so these kind of tests are available today what is issue is that the women should come and come for seeking care for that now further on at around 16 to 18 weeks of gestation we can analyze whether there is a possibility of the woman landing in preterm delivery is whether she has any genito urinary infections which can cause preterm labors and at 18 to 19 weeks again it's very critical to do a anomaly scan that's a entire detailed structural done of the baby wherein you are able to see all the structures of the baby it's possible that 15 to 20% of the times you are not able to analyze thing but just imagine 80 to 90% of the times you are going to be able to analyze the serious disabilities if they are going to be there and if it all are diagnosed early then we can take steps early we can take measures early and these are important now the precautions that the mother has to take additionally is nice to come for tests regularly and then you take the medicines you take the vaccines that are provided like the flu tetanus and so on but what is very important is three important things that the mother has to have a right attitude she has to be positive lot of fear is available now it is you know women are very scared of something or the other they are scared then they are, they are very depressed very you know finally how you are going to be your baby is going to be please remember so that's very important precaution secondly diet important dietary habits very important you have to have proper protein intake you have to take lot of fibers fruits vegetables in your diet you should not take junk foods you should not take any substance abuse you have to sleep on time i must tell you something that if women do not sleep well it has been associated that maternal deprivation of sleep is associated with increased possibility of autism now can we have this so why don't we sleep well having proper exercise so that there is proper circulation of blood inside your body your lungs are properly oxygenated and being very careful about certain things like not getting into acidity pepsi or constipation and generally being very angry and irritable all the time these are simple simple things that you can avoid so in very quick short way i would like to say stick to your antenatal treatment protocol listen to your doctor carefully have a proper lifestyle with good diet good attitude and good physical activity so these if you do i'm sure you are able to definitely reduce a lot and lot of issues that are there going to be affecting our babies who are going to be born uh, dr wag you were going to talk about the role of men in this whole process of marriage and you know pregnancy through the pregnancy the hand holding that the man also has to do the involvement of a man in decision making uh, in taking responsibility um, what are your comments yeah see basically uh, it's been very very traditional that hum, somehow the responsibility of child bearing or getting pregnancy or if a woman is if the couple is not able to make a baby they would usually send the woman first you know that she will go and under, undergo all kind of investigations like recently like i have seen in uh, a good class of society most of the times even the couple coming together for this questioning but still till today i still find younger couples is coming up with the woman coming with her parents asking for the reasons that she is not able to make babies where the man is busy doing some work and if you look at the current statistics you will find that 55 nearly 50 to 55% of infertility in india is contributed by the man and men also are suffering from all these dis disorders that we are talking of and they also can contribute to disability is because of their age if it's an older man his sperms may not be not only it's not about the count and the motility of the sperms but the quality of the sperms is extremely important and if there is substance abuse if there is obesity if there are any medications if some man is suffering from depression alcoholism anything his quality of sperms do get affected and this i have seen sometimes it's very heartbreaking to see in a young man just imagine a 33 year old man is coming to you for pregnancy related issues and then when we analyze him we find that he is having a very very fast fall in his sperm counts every time that we do it so we find that sometimes there is something like how women suffer from premature ovarian failure because of stress and environmental abnormalities or disruptors likewise men 
also suffer from premature testicular failure and this has to be understood because this requires hand holding this requires them to analyze then most important thing is sometimes because of in uh, adequate information they also have abnormal sexual practices these also lead to problems of infertility so men can also contribute to miscarriages you know abnormalities in the baby and therefore when we are talking of pre pregnancy optimization the man's health also matters secondly contributing to a healthy couple relationship is very important because we are in the business of making healthy babies and it's the responsibility of the both the mother and the man the man is not only going to be contributor of the sperm but he has to ensure that the life around that pregnancy and the woman is healthy that she is mentally and physically sound and strong and protected that he ensures that there is good availability of medical care whenever it's necessary that she takes proper nutrition and that whatever help she needs he is around it cannot be only the responsibility of the woman to contribute to making babies it has to be a joint activity because today if you look at the society is not only about structural disabilities there are lot of mental disabilities which are cropping up and for this a very very sound family structure which is a composition of a good paternal as well as maternal source is important because both these people are essential for baby's upbringing many times there is a lot of subtle domestic violence or negligence or ignorance which is never come on the forefront you know it is always put around the mat many times women are extremely tolerant they don't want to expose these issues and these can then sort of convert into project into an abnormal pregnancy outcome so this is our responsibility and this also then escalates into the woman being uh, deprived of good nutrition then get landing into complications problems so all these can definitely be avoided also physical violence can lead to injury to the fetus which yeah, could then yeah. result in a child yeah. Yeah. Patients, yeah coming to us from not only physical violence from the man but even within the family physical violence from the society because today you know that respect for women somehow has really thinned out in the society like people do not pay much credence to whether she is pregnant whether she is child bearing sometimes there can be work place atrocities also sometimes women have to suffer all these things and above all it anita finally i would also say that women also have to become a little stronger you know you have to understand that these things are going to be there understand which is the line where you can draw it and say that okay fine this is what i can take and this is what i cannot so that's very important so knowing the right one's own rights and responsibilities are important so as a part of our anganwadi outreach that we do uh, especially in the slums and in the rural areas we talk about how a girl should be educated so when we say educated we don't really mean that she has to have a phd degree or a graduation from some great college what we mean is that she needs to know her rights as well as her duties not only towards others but also towards herself and that unborn child so yes. it's very important that is why we say 18 to 35 because it's by 18 years of age like you said a girl seems to be sorted enough to know that she can take on some more responsibility than she already has for another human being uh, another baby uh, bringing a baby into the world um so what are the red flags that women should watch out for that might indicate a disability that is during pregnancy any examples and then what uh, tests would you suggest yeah now i'll give you an example of a patient who was taking treatment for acne okay let's give an uh, she was taking treatment for acne she was not aware of it and then what happened was uh, she came for antenatal care she was taking some folic acid supplements arbitrarily here and there and then her pregnancy test came positive and the, as i told you we did the dating scan then we did a, a confirmation scan gave her an appointment for the first trimester screening at 12 weeks of pregnancy and at that time we found that the baby had and in kefen you understand the baby did not have brain structure born now this is a neural tube defect and then when we went back in history she told us that she had taken some medications for some reason and she had a mild viral fever at the time when she actually missed her periods now why this is important because at the time when you miss your periods and you are pregnant that is the time when neural tube already starts forming and neural tube is the basis of your entire brain structure of the baby that's going to form and at that time if you have some insult so imagine 
that you may be planning a baby and you are still menstruating and all but 3 months ahead of planning the baby you must be off all these medicines like if you are taking any anti epileptic medicines or anti depressants or anti diabetic anti hypertensives you must convert them correctly you must start taking good diet folic acid so that you will avoid this and then that was a baby without a brain naturally she had to undergo a miscarriage so we had to you know terminate that pregnancy fortunately enough it got diagnosed early on within the time frame of undergoing a miscarriage so that could be done now there was another such patient who never told us what was her problem she complained to us at around 16 weeks of gestation and she had not undergone any such first trimester screening 12 weeks 13 weeks she never turned up she had done her pregnancy test once at home at 6 weeks she did her a scan with the doctor confirm her pregnancy and then was lost for follow up then she kept on taking some iron calcium local doctor she used to go at 16 to 18 weeks she came to us saying that uh, doctor i am having bleeding and uh, i i think there's some problem with my baby and then we went into her history we found that she was taking treatment for hypothyroidism currently her thyroid was uncontrolled she had full blown diabetes at this point her age is already 35 which is a risk for developing problems in the baby and then naturally now we had to put her through a quadruple marker test so like a double marker test which is done at 12 to 13 weeks we do a anatomy structural scan and then do biomarkers in the mother's blood there are four biomarkers which are done and those help us in analyzing whether there are going to be any genetic abnormalities and if woman has such risk factors we consider doing what is called as a non invasive test which is available in our country for the past 4 5 years now where the mother's blood is taken for testing and in that the fetal dna so the baby's dna is seen in the mother's blood and that is analyzed for certain abnormalities which are not going to be compatible with life having said that you will be able to identify the gross uh, disabilities like if there's an encephaly neural tube defect or any such kind of things you can analyze but you will not be uh, or maybe some karyotypical abnormalities like down syndrome and certain other things but all the abnormalities you are not going to be able to analyze so what is then the way forward the way forward is before you embark on pregnancy and while you are conceiving be careful that is the time when if you take proper food proper measures control all your ailments and then take this test well in time we can definitely avoid a lot of heartbreak and therefore like, like today itself a very very educated learned patient has done her scan at 12 weeks she just did the nt scan did not do the markers at all and now has landed at 22 weeks of pregnancy where anomaly scan structural scan nothing has been done now god forbid just imagine if a baby turns out to be abnormal what are we going to do how are we going to handle this situation if the baby is abnormal because we cannot terminate pregnancies just like that you know there are certain great sort of uh, timelines and things that can be and we feel that this can be definitely avoided why should a baby be be born with a disability when you can just simply avoid it so therefore these small <coughs> small things if you take follow the doctor and i say be you do a lot of googling isn't it why don't you see the right things go and read the right blog if you want go and listen to right things or if you don't understand go and find a doctor and just take some advice so that we can you know be able to offer correct things um within the framework of law what are the suggestions that you can give uh, to parents and of course this is completely from the medical point of view because now they say that there is a social model and a medical model so this is not the social model we are talking about a medical model and therefore you're coming from the point of view of a doctor what is the advice that you would give i have had a person with a disability clearly ask me during a debate about abortion so do you believe that i should not have been given birth to should i have been aborted in the womb it's a very personal thing for many people you know and even for the parents sometimes so you mean this child should not have existed so the right to existence the right to life is there but there is also a right to a good life absolutely you know quality of life is also extremely important and a child with a disability when it is born i need to say this also impacts the life of everybody in the family so i think everybody collectively how what what are the recommendations that you make in such a situation See, first and foremost no your baby is your baby i would like to say that it's an emotional connect that's a creation that you made and you must have, take the ownership of that baby whether it is disabled baby or otherwise 
so it's your baby it's born from your body it's born from your cells and your genes have contributed to that baby whatever you did or did not do has made whatever has happened and these are destinies these are something which you cannot change having said that things which are able to be optimized is better having said that things which can be diagnosed earlier is better now sometimes when patients come to me when we diagnose their problem at 16 to 18 weeks and we have to discuss across the table i always ask them what is your call to be taken this baby is going to have a down syndrome this is going to be the life of that baby it's your call to take because i must tell you anita that there have been patients who have told me whether it's downs or no downs doc this is my baby i want to take this baby forwards absolutely that's your right as a parent you can do whatever you want to with your baby what is my duty ki these are the challenges if you want to take these challenges then you have to be well prepared for that don't get driven by the society of course you know some of us do not have access to good financial support also you know good family support and then naturally you want to feel that the quality of life can get affected and you as a parent don't want your baby to suffer that's why you don't want such a baby to born but let me tell you in my own family i have a baby who is born with a variant of downs and she has led a wonderful life we ensure that she had a wonderful life so you can always think of that aspect of it and not get into that social thing now when you said that there are a lot of controversies about abortions and mtps i would like to say that mtps is a right of a woman it was something which was granted by our government to us in 1972 where many women were dying of complications of abortions so the government decided to make it legal so it's woman's right if she doesn't want to have a particular pregnancy she need not have it but it has to be in the correct social framework and a medical framework so there is a right to live and this is determined by the age of viability which at this point in time stands at 20 weeks of gestation exactly at 20 weeks of gestation beyond that a facility like me where i am a licensed doctor who can perform medical terminations i cannot do it despite the government making debates and passing circulars into the parliament of 24 weeks abortions my question to the parents is when this is known to you why don't you take it responsibility to come for correct diagnosis and all kinds of tests before that requisite time i'll give you an example we had a couple a young couple who had suffered from two miscarriages one was at 8 weeks where the baby did not grow and died in utero second one was at 10 weeks baby did not grow died in utero no investigation was performed no karyotype no testing of the mother nothing was done and now they become pregnant for the third time and this time they did not come for any care till 22 weeks of gestation and at 22 weeks we diagnosed that the baby has a diaphragmatic hernia you understand now diaphragmatic hernia means all the structures which are in the tummy have come into the chest now this baby can have issues first of all it can have compromise of the lung function inside the body and may succumb or when it is born it will have to undergo surgery now isn't it your duty as a parent to come on time within the requisite framework for an advice to the doctor so that we now while here we are breaking our head now that this baby doesn't have enough lung capacity should we go in for a miscarriages and none of us are allowing it to do it see if i want to do a abortion of this patient i cannot even do it on humanitarian grounds i have to make raise an affidavit i have to take an affidavit from the court of law there is a body of medical experts who will sit and then only they will advise us to terminate this pregnancy secondly the suffering that the woman will go you know terminating a pregnancy after 19 weeks is put under a scanner not only for the right of living it's not that component the mother can land up in very serious complications she can have hemorrhage she can have infection she can have injury to her womb and therefore then if you are see there are two sets of people people who are ready to take babies the way they come to them they said okay it's fine it's my baby i'll do whatever and there are other set of people who said no doing i want my baby to be perfectly normal now in that situation you have to identify who you are and if you are so then you must take the requisite care
we cannot anita keep on saying that the society is ignorant we have to keep on teaching them it's high time that we also take responsibility of learning right so uh, there are people with disabilities now coming to the other side there are people with disabilities who want to start a family nowadays um they believe that they have a right to which they definitely do it's a human right uh, to have a family so there are many women that i know who have no sensation below the waist you know it could be a spinal cord injury or cerebral palsy or whatever else and they may not even realize that they are having discomfort like we would right so have such patients come to you and what has been your advice to them yeah there are they are not very common though but there are quite a few patients who have such kind of abnormalities who have come to us and uh, we have definitely encouraged them to have babies explaining to them what are going to be the pros and the cons of that and secondly understanding the fact that it's important to put yourself under a very close screening first of all we analyze the patient and her husband itself to find out whether they have anything which is transferable to the baby so a pre pregnancy genetic counseling helps us in identifying whether there are going to be any possibilities in that case then we would discourage them to go ahead but if they would still want or sometimes there are many a time situations where they have become pregnant and then they come to us and in that situation then we advise them to go through a very very regular kind of a screening a proper antenatal care and we take them from there onwards so um, it's not that they would be denied getting into pregnancy the challenge is however how much support system they have and most importantly are they able and capable of taking care because you know the family structure is also getting fragmented nowadays anita we have to have a lot of social support in these patients a financial support whether if that's there it's their optimal of course they can go ahead and have their babies why not because sometimes uh, we need extra care we have to uh, tell them now for example you have a patient who is afflicted with a, a disorder like a polio the hip bones are going to be completely distorted and there then challenges of getting a normal delivery is not going to be possible so we have to tell them that you have to and be prepared that maybe you may require a cesarean section at the time of delivery and such kind of things depending on what is the disability we definitely give them specific advices but sometimes even i must tell you that i have also gone to an extent where i have advised adoption to these people i said that instead of doing that why don't you go for an adoption because that will help you to complete your wishes of mothering somebody but most importantly you'll also be able to create a wonderful life and you know? a parenting opportunity will be there for a Uh, our own you know human being who needs that kind of a parent so that also is and i don't think we should look at it as some sort of a need or service to society you should look at it like your own responsibility in love having a baby you know owning one baby making it grow even if it comes from an adoption why not i keep saying this that marriage is also adoption you're bringing in an adult so it shouldn't be a big thing to bring in a little baby who's Uh, thinking yeah. you know you know that you can nurture the thinking the Absolutely. behavior the character of a baby you can nurture much better than that of an adult i don't know the politically correct way of asking this question the straight question is there are procedures carried out so that a girl who has intellectual challenges does not get pregnant um have you carried out any of these procedures and what is your view point i okay now i am uh, grateful to the universe for giving me this particular timeline in my existence as a clinical practitioner where i did not require to take recourse of this kind of procedures for such ch challenges so i feel that i am very fortunate while some of my seniors were not so fortunate now let's look at why these women would have to be undergoing these procedures you know because the most important thing is they menstruate and their menstrual hygiene is something which is import absolutely impossible to be managed by the family because they just can't take care of their menstrual hygiene we know that they require to use certain um, uh, sanitary pads or sanitary methods which these children because they don't understand and therefore they cannot take care of themselves and that was the reason why probably it got escalated to performing a hysterectomy where the womb was removed in them secondly the other reason was there was always a fear of these children being you know okay. taken disadvantage or sexually abused and then landing in harm as well as landing in unwanted pregnancy so with these two reasons what was the best thing to be done 
the best thing that was identified to be done was to remove the womb so that na rahegi bas na rahega basuri but then we understood over a period of time that it is a morbid procedure and then this used to be performed and it may be still but i have not done it in the my past 25 years of my practice but these procedures um, are done under the guidance of a uh, you know a government accredited psychiatrist has to give a certification there's a social body which sits in and then only they take a decision of giving such a permission you cannot just go up get up and do a hysterectomy then what do you do what did i do i had so many such instances where i had to give them help i give them certain injectables you know there are some wonderful medicines these are hormonal medicines which are given in young girl older women which are perfectly safe they protect the woman from menstruation and they protect her from cancer and they also protect her from an unwanted pregnancy so these injections are available they are absolutely safe they are time tested which can be given every 3 monthly and that helps in protecting them against this unwanted disaster which can happen to them now sometimes you may have a variant of such kind of a disability wherein they have some level of iq and then the parents are tempted that let's get into a married relationship or a pregnancy we have to understand that marriage is a very serious business and you just cannot push into you know social um, situation sometimes demand ki hum inka shaadi kar sakte hai kya hum uh, we will find a match just like her for her why get into this because these are responsibilities even if two families decide to come together and this you know mishaps can happen so i usually suggest that make her empowered or make him empowered if sometimes there's a boy also with such a problem make her or him empowered and then let them be self sustainable let them do things on their own and let's not get into what are their sexual needs or reproductive needs because unnecessarily carrying a responsibility of something which is not going to be handled by them primarily i don't think is a great idea that is my opinion of course personal opinion but then having said that i would like to individualize a case and then probably give them a guidance that's wonderful thank you so much for that answer um very similar to what most of us think whether it is practical or not for them to actually take on that responsibility is the main question um the last question that i want to ask you um is is there enough information around disabilities among people in society do you think do you get asked these questions often enough do you wish more people would ask more questions about all of this so that they are aware and that they make the right decisions number 1 number 2 which is a extension of this how can we make this information and healthcare more inclusive and accessible also to people with disabilities yeah now yes if you ask me about the knowledge base and the information that is available to our youngsters unfortunately it is seriously lacking uh they are not aware of these problems because i'll tell you if you can see that the government is making various kinds of posters awareness programs everywhere under various uh, you know uh, divisions and healthcare uh, mechanisms and the simple thing now let's take an example of a rubella vaccine now rubella is a viral infection when it affects a pregnant woman during her early stages of pregnancy which can be just like a simple viral fever can give rise to disabilities in the baby where the babies may be born with a cataract or deafness or dumbness and these cannot be diagnosed by doing any kind of sonography now the simple action to do this and to prevent this is by taking a rubella vaccine before you embark upon pregnancy so when you are young woman who is a potential mother of the next 20 years at around 18 to 20 you can just take a simple rubella vaccine simple nobody takes in my practice i have taken this only about 2% of women who visit my practice for pregnancy have taken this vaccination in their pre pregnancy planning protocol to know whether they are protected or not what does that mean that there is a huge dearth you know a huge deficiency of knowledge and we require to find mechanisms to mujhe ye nahi samajh mein aata ki there is a wonderful know how about wearing a wonderful red t-shirt on a blue jeans you know what wonderful brands are available for hair color to makeup to lipstick to the clothes everything but how come we are not able to reach out with the knowledge about disabilities about planning babies about health issues about anemia diabetes folic acid ye kyu hai of birth control 
unfortunately i think there is some sort of a selective amnesia or maybe a complete disregard for our existence as a socially responsible person the second thing the second question that you asked was um, how can we improvise this knowledge base is this is a wonderful forum that you have and i feel and i wish that you are more empowered to have these important things here because i understand that there are a lot of logistic issues involved there is money involved there is support involved there is acceptance involved but somehow we have to devise mechanisms of having these discussions again and again time and again in various fora in various languages and advocacy is the only best way in which we can go about it thank you so much and that is exactly uh, dr varg you'll be happy to know that is what we've been doing for a very long time we've been taking this information in the form of booklets these are our booklets that go to every anganwadi worker and so you know, even to get the support of the cdpo and the icd this department is so difficult they very often uh, what we are trying to do is not understood and they tell us things like are ye to hame pata hai wadya che tappe growth my we know the milestones and i tell them have you ever related a milestone to a disability do you know what happens you know uh, if the child does not cross a milestone at the right time do you know what happens next so the things are not connected so they are all very disconnected talking to anganwadi workers talking to asha workers we are trying to spread this information even in the slums and the rural areas but this uh, conversation that we are having in english although it might look like it is a very elitist kind of a thing that will go on um, you know social networking media etc it's important that everybody knows about all of this and i'm sure that a lot of our interns uh, and my team members have learned a lot just by listening to you today and you've been so generous in sharing so much information honestly a uh, very very generous doctor for having um, you know given us so much more information than the questions actually prompted and that's really wonderful of you i think thank you so much thank for being so much. a part of this and i thank my team also for putting all of this together and i hope to have a wonderful series and you've been our first guest um and i hope thank we get a lot of information about different disabilities through this series thank you so much dr varg and thank you team ekach thank you so thank much thank you anita for giving me this opportunity according to me my knowledge and my skills are the gifts which are given to me by god and they have to be put to good use of humanity and you today have acted as a carrier for this for me thank you thank you so much thank you dr varg